small tutorials related to Divi um, that have that relate to questions that people ask me that I think have simple enough solutions where I can show you guys how to do it yourself. One of those questions is usually how do I add a custom font to Divi or generally WordPress? I'm going to talk specifically about Divi, but I will show you general uh, practices on how to add fonts if you ever need to on other WordPress themes, um, but that's a bit harder. So for this video today, I'm just going to show you the Divi way, if that makes sense. So let's start with that. Um, let me go onto a website that I'm sort of building, but I'm not done with. And let's assume that I need to add a custom font. If you know Divi at all, when you enable Visual Builder, right, you can decide the font you want for any text element. And yes, Divi does have an extensive list of fonts that you can use. I'm just going to randomly select this text element here. Give me one second for Divi to load. And I'm just going to show you the font that it's actually currently using. So this is a H1 tag. So we would have to go into design, heading text. As you can see, it's using Poppins. Now, oh, these are all Google fonts, and they're very good in relation to what we would want. But let's say a client is very specific, and they want a specific font. And I will show you um, one of the fonts that I found that I needed to use for a client. And I've decided to. Um, I've decided to use that font for them. So let's let's start with select trying to upload this book font. I'll I'll let you guys know about which font I'm talking about in a second. Give me three seconds to go and find the font on my desktop. The font is called. Let me just extract it. It's called Bodoni, Bodoni FLF. And as you can see, there are different types of fonts depending on the font weight. I am going to do the Bodoni bold italic weight currently. So all I would do is I would have to select this TTF file. And then I would say, you know what? This font is going to be called Botoni TTF Italic, which is what Divi will show as its name. And you'll notice that I could say all, or I could start using Divi's um, fonts, font, font weights. Now, because I don't know when I'll be using this font, it's better just to leave it on all, even though it says bold italic, which would make you think that you could select um, the bold italic font, the, the bold style alone. But let's assume that we don't know when we will be wanting to use it or whether we would like to apply bold or italic or not. So I'm going to click upload. Don't worry, this is part of the plan. So as you can see, it says, sorry, this type of files not permitted for security reasons, and that has to do with WordPress, per se. So WordPress has a security feature where it doesn't allow you to upload any file types other than specific ones, for example, PDFs, image formats, and maybe a zip file, at the very least. So you would have to enable the, um, the specific file type that you want. Just as a side note, remember that font files can be either TTF or OTF sometimes. So you would have to enable these. And as a side note, I will be throwing a bit of code into the, um, I will be showing you basically the code that I would need to write to allow 
WordPress to accept my font upload. So now I have to X the Visual Builder. I'm going to discard my changes because they didn't have any effects anyway. And then what I would have to do is I would have to go into a child theme and activate the ability to be able to upload that. So I would have to go and create a child theme if I didn't have one. Um, and say, you know what, theme editor, very dangerous if you don't know what you're doing and you're not a coding person. Currently, I am using a child theme specifically already. So I would be able to do it if I wanted to. But on some sites, you don't even create child themes, obviously. For this site, because it's a booking website, it's a bit um, specific and I have to use a child theme because it's a hotel booking website. So I could go in and stuff in some code here and say, you know what, let's, let's allow OTF and um, TTF uploads. And there, there is a way to do it. I would suggest you don't do it unless you actually know what you're doing. My bit of code is this here. So what I've done is basically I've added allowed MIME types to the existing MIME types array here. If you don't know what this means, don't worry about it too much. Because in reality, I'm going to remove this code right now and I'm going to enable the plugin. There are plugins that do this. I have a specific plugin for Divi that does have the ability to enable OTF and TTF, but this is basically the code you would have to write. Um, I am I'm not even going to... Um, I can save it and show you that this works, but there is no reason to do that. I will leave the code in the show notes. It's tested and I know it works. So I'm going to drop this code for now. Okay, I don't need to do anything. And then I will have to go into my plugins and activate a nice little plugin that does the job for me. It does lots of jobs, but it does this as well. So it's called Divi Toolbox. It does a lot of things. I'm not affiliated with the plugin or anything. I just use it. So um, I should now be able to uh, enable that through an option instead of writing those functions in my child theme because you might writing a child theme is a good thing if you're doing loads of customizations. But if you guys are beginners, um, I assume you will not be writing any custom code, I guess. Um, for the beginning, so let me just go to uh, the option that allows me to do that. I would go to admin here for the plugin, and I would find it to allow uh, TTF and OTF file uploads. It basically writes those lines of code for us to allow for the font to be uploaded. So now um, that this is going, I can go back to the website and I can do the font upload once again. So here I would go into enable visual builder and I would have to now, I would now be allowed to basically change the font for my H1 tag, which give it a second to load. So I would now be able to change my font to whatever font I wanted. But specifically, let's upload the font I was busy uploading before. I have to upload these separately, and I'm going to steal the name again just so that I know which one I'm choosing. Um, I just steal the file name because it helps me remember. So I click that, and I use the same name as before for this. I choose all because I don't know when I'll be using it. So I click upload. Now the upload went through. And as you can see, the font changed and um, it has allowed for that font to upload. And you go on doing the same thing for the next font weight. So this is just the bold one with no italics. So I could select the name just as a precursor to that. And then I'll use the same name again. Um, I don't know how the stream is going to work because it's actually my first time and I don't know if it's going to work out. But as you can see, I've uploaded fonts. Now I'm not going to save the changes, but literally that is the way 
to upload fonts in Divi. And in most cases, page builders have an option for you to upload fonts. Um, it, Google Fonts obviously already available in most page, builder, page builders, but when a client needs a specific font, this is one way to do it, at least in Divi. Remember that you might need a child theme if you don't have a plugin that allows this option for you, but there are so many of them out there. So you can use one of those, I suppose. Um, I will drop, let me see, ah, Xanthi is here. <laughs> nice to see you. Um, I'm gonna drop the bit of code that I was talking about before um, so that you guys have it because I'm guessing you guys might not have been able to clearly see it. I'll put it in the show notes when I'm done. But the, the code looks something like this. And obviously you can add file types to the array. But um, because most of you will probably create a security hole in your um, in your WordPress, preferably don't try and do that or ask someone that knows how to do it, to do it for you. But generally speaking, it's easy enough to get a font going in Divi. If you guys feel like asking me anything else, related or unrelated to Divi, feel free. Um, if you have any frustrations with uh, Divi and I can maybe answer a question that may be unrelated to this easy little problem, but it is one of those things where it's the hardest thing to get a uh, font to upload because now WordPress has built-in security features that don't allow for file types that we would normally allow because I don't know if you guys know this, but you can embed malicious code into fonts if you're smart enough. Please don't do that. Um, but other than that, make sure that you allow file types only, um, only trusted file types. And obviously, please um, make sure your admin is secure so that malicious actors like hackers don't go and start uploading fonts. But then again, if they were able to get into your admin or your editor-related WordPress accounts, it might be an issue anyway. Um, Xanthi has some great tutorials on Elementor, if you guys want to check her out. We do a lot of stuff together, and obviously I'm the Divi side. She's more the Elementor side. Um, but to be honest, um, the, the process is, is, is literally the same in most page builders. Remember that it is a good thing to sort of tell your clients to think of the fonts they use. Uh, yeah, it's not about doing the wrong thing. It's more of making holes in your own WordPress without noticing because most people just um, start doing things because they see snippets of code. I understand the snippet of code that I pasted for you as a coder myself. I can tell you if there's something weird going on or if something's, someone's doing something crazy, if you know basic coding. But literally, you can do a million things wrong and you can open your site up to crazy things. For example, if I were to allow an extension .php, if you don't know what that is, that's the language that WordPress uses to talk to the database and everything else. So those files are essentially executed. I could um, write a PHP file that if I upload it using the upload button on any page builder, including Divi, if I allow that file type to upload in that upload box, I would be able to write a script that would allow um the person to create uh to create an admin account that could then access your site so don't randomly just start typing in this code that i typed in as you can see even i use a plugin because i know the plugin is specifically written to not allow anything else other than font stuff um and i might Design-wise, the client might need me to enable SVG, which is a common type for vector graphics. Something where maybe we should bring in our graphics friends at some point, our graphic designer friend, um, to talk about why SVGs are better than normal PNGs or JPEGs. 
But um, SVG is one of those types where, again, you can embed code and do something malicious like create admin accounts using random code in the SVG file. So it's better if you don't try to hand code if there's ready-made solutions that you know are secure enough to work. Uh, yeah, Vassal, that's what I'm talking about. Um, we should bring her in to tell people why SVGs might be a good idea for their websites. I prefer not to open the topic because if I do, I'm sure because I'm not a graphics designer, I'm going to say the wrong thing. Although technically, as a developer, I can tell you that SVGs, because they use vectors, when you resize them, it doesn't matter what size it is, you won't lose quality. But that's something a graphics designer could talk about at some point. Um, and Vassal would be the ideal person for that if we get her on you, if we can coax her into doing this. Thanks for joining, guys. This was a simple, quick one. It was my first try with um, Restream Studio, to be honest. Um, I don't know, come to think of it, if it came out as well as I expected it to, I guess. But it's my first go at this, and I'm thinking of, of doing this instead of doing my tutorials using the Loom platform, where I would just talk you through the steps, and you would never see who I actually was because I only have my photo on there. Um, if you guys have questions, feel free to shoot them over in the comments. I will leave the snippet of code, and I will put in my suggestion to not use code unless you know exactly what it does and why it's doing what it's doing, because anybody can write anything. And if you don't know code, you might never know that they created an admin user in your dashboard if you're not actually looking at the user section, for example. Enjoy your night, guys. Um, I'm hoping to be able to do this more often, depending on the questions that come in and the tutorial ideas that I get to do these short, nice tutorials for people. Hopefully, it helps you guys out. And if you have any questions, you're allowed to um, ask them in the comments. And if you ever watch this on replay, mention that you're watching it on replay and where you're watching from, just so that I can sort of, in my head, have an idea of where people are watching this from. And if it's helpful, let me know. If you have some other question that I can answer that you think is easy enough to do in like a few minutes of a YouTube tutorial, free, feel free to ask me to do one for you because I, I basically do this for clients as well. When they ask me something about their WordPress website where they're managing it, um, I might just tell them, you guys, the solution is so simple, you can do it yourself. And I make a two minute video for them to solve whatever the issue is. It might be that they forgot how to add an image or how to change specific text on a specific section of the website. So if you guys have Divi related questions or general WordPress related questions, feel free to shoot them over. Um, we'll be in touch as soon as I get another idea for one of these tutorials. Nice to see you, Xanti. Thanks for jumping in. Um, make a blog using Divi. Oh, you know what? I'll make a tutorial on that one, but the reality is uh, Divi has a blog module, and you can quite easily do that. But I will, I will show you, and I and I sort of think I know where you're going with this. Um, but it's easy enough to create a blog in any WordPress website, and yes, I will do one specifically for Divi for you, Xanthi. I'll put it on my little list. Like adding the blog module. Yeah, I'll do that. Not a problem. It's easy enough. I'll, I'll go for that one next. If I have time tomorrow night and I'm not running around with clients, I will jump on Restream and I will do one for you. And I'll also sort of show you um, something called the Theme Builder that can help you build more efficiently in Divi, and the reason I say theme builder is because I use a lot, a lot to create the template of how my blog is going to look internally. So if I click on a blog page, um, I can decide how the design is going to look when I click on a box for a specific article, for example. Um, I will show you guys how I do that usually now with the theme builder. So I guess I'll see you guys whenever. Um, I can. I'll try and make this a, a normal thing where I have a quick tutorial 
maybe daily, maybe twice a week. I don't know. I haven't got a schedule yet, but it's an idea to make one. As long as I have enough ideas, I'll be jumping on Restream and giving you guys tips and tricks for Devi. Um, I already have some tutorials that I've done with uh, Loom without you actually seeing my face. Um, one of the most common questions is the contact form and why it's not sending emails. You guys can check that out on my YouTube channel. Take a look at my videos. Some of them might be helpful to you even today. Um, so you guys just give my channel a go and see. If you think you have a topic for me to, to answer, leave it in any kind of comment on any of the posts that you enjoy watching and on any kind of the videos that you enjoy watching. And um, I might make a video about it. You never know. Thanks, guys. Have a great night.